in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Well, a warm welcome to all who join us here in St. Cuthbert's Church in Shockley Bridge, and who are also joining us live and later online through our Facebook pages and other social media. Uh, today's a special day. It's the Feast of the Presentation of Christ in the Temple, more commonly known as Candlemas. In both of the parishes which I serve, we've already celebrated the feast, anticipating it last Sunday. But this is an opportunity for everyone now to join in on the actual day, the 2nd of February. It celebrates Jesus at the age of 40 days being brought to the temple by Mary and Joseph and they're greeted by Simeon and Anna as a light to the nations. So we too look to him as our light. And we're given a formal introduction to today's feast, which now I share with you. Dear friends, 40 days ago we celebrated the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we recall the day on which he was presented in the temple, when he was offered to the Father and shown to his people. As a sign of his coming among us, his mother was purified, as we now come to him for cleansing. In their old age, Simeon and Anna recognized him as their Lord, as we today sing of his glory. In this Eucharist, we celebrate both the joy of his coming and his searching judgment, looking back to the day of his birth and forward to the coming days of his passion. Hear the words of our Saviour Jesus Christ, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let us therefore now bring our sins into his light, as we confess them in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We stand to join in the anthem, the Gloria in Excelsis. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King. Almighty God and Father. We worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the nations and glory of Israel, make your home among us and present us pure and holy to your heavenly Father, your God and our God. Amen. You sit for the first reading. Reading from the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, See, I'm sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. 
and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien, and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the song, Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. O gates, lift up your heads, grow higher ancient doors, let him enter the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, the mighty, the valiant, the Lord, the valiant in war. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors, let him enter the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. Who is he, the King of glory? He, the Lord of armies, he is the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. This child is the light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male should be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband, seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth, the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom. The favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Would you be seated, please? 
There's a lot going on in this gospel reading which we've just heard. Perhaps we can't take it all in. We read it year after year, but always there are new things to find. We tend to major on this child Jesus being greeted as a light to the nations. On Sunday, we had candles out in abundance uh, in both the churches of our parish. It's a light for us to receive, a light for us to share. But there's something as well going on here. It's not only the presentation of our Lord in the temple, 40 days on, but it's also a purification rite, purification of Mary, it would seem. One of my dim and distant memories is of how at the age of six I went along one weekday evening to our parish church with my mother and I just remember myself sitting at the back of the church and my mother being in a front pew along with the vicar. What was happening? I think she was being churched after the birth of my younger brother. I still find it in the prayer book. It's technically called the service of thanksgiving after childbirth, but also commonly called the churching of women. It's a rite that's hardly ever, I think, performed these days. By the time I was ordained, uh, we were using a more modern version, but with everybody who would come along as part of their baptism preparation. So not only the mother, father as well, godparents too, transforming all of this into thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is indeed the note that we need but there's something else that's going on that goes right back through all the centuries in obedience to an ancient law. Mary and Joseph now come to the temple. Perhaps they don't know quite what they'll be doing. I've experienced that sometimes when we celebrate a baptism in church. People will say, so what do we do? Where do we sit? What are we going to say? There's no need to worry about that. That's what I want to say. To come is actually the first step, and already God is there welcoming us. Christ is there to greet us. On this occasion, though, there are two people who are quite unexpected. Mary and Joseph might expect to meet with the priest, but the people who get remembered are Simeon and Anna. Simeon, who's moved by the Spirit to go into the temple, who takes the child into his arms, praises God and recognizes him as a light for revelation to the Gentiles. And then there's Anna. I was reading this gospel reading yesterday as I took communion to people in their homes and in a care home. Uh, when I went to do my second communion, the lady I was with had listened, of course, to these words about Anna. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. And this lady said to me, yep, my next birthday is my 85th birthday. She's the same age as Anna. There we were together reading these words. And a truth for her, as truthful as in her younger days, that Christ was there for her. There we met with him in his sacrament of Holy Communion. Here we meet with Christ as well. We're bidden to recognize him as a light to the nations, a light for ourselves, a light to guide, and a light for us to share. And let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. with all our thanksgivings in our prayer now, all that brings us here to meet together in this place, online, together and in separate places, yet united in the one Lord. Come the prayer of our Anglican communion today for the church in the United States and the Diocese of Pennsylvania for its Bishop Daniel Gutierrez. Pray for our own Diocese of Durham. For our bishops, Paul and Sarah, the assistant bishops, John David. We pray
secretary for the diocesan finance group as it meets. Its chair, Max Vaughan. We pray for the work of this church and parish for our life. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. We pray for this world and our nation, for those who particularly know the darkness and seek the light. Pray for the people who live in the midst of violence inflicted on them in Ukraine, under oppressive regimes in Iran, in Afghanistan. For all who yearn for justice and freedom, for our own nation, for our government and opposition, for employers and employees in this time of so much industrial dispute and disruption. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our particular concern for prayer within our parishes today, we pray for those who work to provide health care and healing. Pray for the NHS, for those who are stretched, for those who know its pressures, for those who formulate policies, they may do so wisely, the sense for compassion. We pray for those we know to be in need of healing, especially of this parish, we pray now for Sammy Hewlett, Edith Reed, Jim Burns, Andrew Bates, Susan Earlham, Bob Parker, Audrey Johnson, and Ian Watson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend your keeping those who have died. Of the recently departed, we pray for Richard Barr, whose funeral is today, and for Joan Watson. Remember those who've died in past years at this time, amongst them Thomas Kidd, Lorna Margaret Charlton, June Love, George Rutherford, Richard Thompson, and Wilfred Ayton. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. A litany of intercession for this feast of the presentation. As a response, after the words, Lord have mercy, would you make the response, Christ have mercy? Let us pray to the Father through Christ who is our light and life. Father, your Christ is acclaimed as the glory of Israel. Look in mercy on your church, sharing his light. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, your Christ in his temple brings judgment on the world. Look in mercy on the nations who long for his justice. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, your Christ, who was rich, for our sakes became poor. Look in mercy on the needy, suffering with him. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, your Christ is the one in whom faithful servants find their peace. Look in mercy on the departed, that they may see your salvation. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, your Christ is revealed as the one destined to be rejected. Look in mercy on us who now turn towards his passion. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. In a time of silence, let us make our own particular thanks and prayers to God our Father. Lord God, you kept faith with Simeon and Anna and showed them the infant king. Give us grace to put all our trust in your promises and the patience to wait for their fulfillment through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We stand for the peace. And if you're following us now online, know that you are included in these words. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high has broken upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
congregation please be seated during the offertory. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Father, in Christ there has sprung up a light for the righteous. Accept the gifts we bring before you, and grant that Christ may shine in us to the praise and glory of your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to it is indeed right and good, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is one with you from all eternity. For on this day he appeared in the temple in substance of our flesh, to come near to us in judgment. He searches the hearts of all your people and brings to light the image of your splendor. Your servant Simeon, acclaimed him as the light to lighten the nations, while Anna spoke of him to all who looked for your redemption. Destined for the falling and rising of many, he was lifted high upon the cross, and a sword of sorrow pierced his mother's heart, when by his sacrifice he made our peace with you. And now we rejoice and glorify your name, that we too have seen your salvation, and join with angels and archangels, in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, the Apostles, Anna, Simeon, St. Cuthbert and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be the body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
pray. Lord, you fulfilled the hope of Simeon, who did not die until he had been privileged to welcome the Messiah. May this communion perfect your grace in us and prepare us to meet Christ when he comes to bring us into everlasting life, for he is Lord for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. It's been good as ever to meet with you, those of you who are here in church and those of you as well who have been following us online. Our services on Sunday are at the regular times. Um, no, they're not. It's the second Sunday of the month. So it's 10.30 here in St. Cuthbert's Church in Shotley Bridge. Oh, I got this right. What day is it? Um, no, I am right. It is the regular times. It's 9 o'clock in St. John's Church uh, in Castleside, and it's 10.30 here in St. Cuthbert's Church in Shockley Bridge. Uh, different the week after that. Uh, you can find further details in our parish magazine. That's online for anyone who wants to look at it, and also in the parish pew sheet. Uh, and for those of you who are here in church, uh, you'll see that there's an invitation to sign up to get copies of the Lent book, Dust and Glory, uh, which will be selling for £2, and there's a sign-up sheet at the back of church for anyone. Uh, you don't need to leave your money yet. I've still to place the order, but I need to know how many to get. Look out for anything else that is going on in the various places in which we publish the information. And we pray for God's blessing now upon you on this day and the days to come. The Lord be with you. I am also with you. Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.